This is Mike Bot. Welcome to video number two on the Hue Forge series that I have started. Today I come to you with an exciting new function I have figured out and I shouldn't say function it's an app I discovered and it's gonna really help out with the painting and it's pretty damn cool. Now the only catch with this new app that I've discovered is you may not be able to find the um, exact filament match with the manufacturer so it's going to be a lot of trial and error, but this is going to take your Hue Forge experience to the next level. And I'm excited to share this with everybody. So for those of you that are following my posts on Facebook, welcome. This is the video I was mentioning. And for everyone else that's new, welcome and uh, hope you enjoy my channel. Please subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. And always, always leave your comments. I always get back to everybody. And if you like my videos, hit the like button. So let's get started. So first things first, I have Hue Forge open right here. So I'm going to start by So I'm going to start by loading an image first. So first things first, there was an image sent to me by a friend of mine. And I'm going to use that image. So it's right here and um I just got this new recording software. I was using a free one before, but now I'm using more of a premium software. So I don't know how to get rid of this. <laughs> My picture right here in the top right corner. All right, so I've figured out how to uh, fix the video. So now moving forward. So as you can see, I've put a bunch of new colors in here and that has to do with the tool that I've discovered. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to try to match this one here that I'm going to print with this one as close as possible. So you're going to have to do a lot of research and make sure the filament colors are available with this tool or you're not going to get the print as you do it. So try to work with the colors you have and if you have the money to spend on different shades and colors and all that then this tool will come in handy. So here it is. So I was looking for something where I can kind of get codes on different filament colors because I want to try to match pictures as much as possible. Uh, if you're anything uh, like me and you like to save money, then purchase directly off the manufacturer's site, you save a fortune. So I'll just show you, for example, I buy mine directly off of Airy One Canada. I also use Sunloo because they have good deals. So I go to Canadian pricing and then filament. I usually look for sales. So they had a massive pre-sale. So I was able to pick up a ton of PLA from them. You do have to buy, I think 20 rolls minimum, but you end up paying like 16 to $18 per roll. Now compared to Amazon, that's basically half price. Amazon charges me between 36 to $40 a roll after taxes. So it's a pretty good deal, but you do have to wait for the filament. Now with Sunloo, Whenever I end up buying filament from them, I get it within two to three days. So it's a much better deal, but it's a much better deal, but I've already put my investment into everyone. Unfortunately, I regret it now because it's taking forever. I placed my big order in April and I'm yet to receive my 40 some rolls. I've received maybe 16 so far with Sun Lu, I place the order and I get them pretty, pretty quick. And you can see the price is pretty cheap and I'm pretty sure this is American pricing, but even then in Canadian pricing, it's like 16, $17 a roll still. And you don't have to buy 20 rolls. You can just buy three rolls and you get the deal anyway. So make sure you reference the colors off this tool with your manufacturer that you buy. So go ahead and download the tool and I'll post the link for this. It's called the uh, color contrast analyzer. I'll post the link in my description. So once it's downloaded, uh, install it, and then it'll look something like this. So what you wanna do here, you wanna grab the little uh, picker here, wait for it to generate, and then click the filament color, and then you get a code. So with this code, you copy it, and go to new filament down here, punch the code in down here where it says HTML, input it, and then put your filament brand there and the color. So what I do is I put the hex code in, go generic and I click add. I've already added the colors here. Now, if I go to Amazon Canada, I'm gonna see if I can kind of uh, find 
this exact color with PLA. And there we go, I actually found it. So I typed in PLA. Uh, I'm gonna have this part here blurred away so you're not gonna see what I typed in because my personal info is there. So I typed in PLA and then the hex code and then I got Ellie Goo Goo and everyone. They have the exact shade. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, it wasn't the exact shade. So, so like I said, you'll have to do your research. You can always type in PLA brown and then try to find the colors and the shades that match. So this one kind of matches, this one does, this one does. Uh, click, add to cart, and that's if you want to spend that. If you don't, try to work with the colors you have. It's a little bit more difficult that way. But if you have the means of uh, buying different shades and have the money for it, this is a really cool way to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and start now. Um, refer to my first video on all the different tools here and how they work. I'm not going to go over them again. So basically, we're going to start by shading. So I'm going to start with going to brightness compensation and I'm going to try to find one that kind of looks nice for this one. So it looks like the bright, dark, and hands kind of looks nice. And they've selected black, gray, silver, and white as the default. So I'm going to keep my base as black and looking at this, you want to try to analyze this the best you can. Um, you're working in layers. Remember that these are all layers here. So think about this as in layers. You want the last layer to be white because it's white in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. And then I'm going to add that one in. Just drag and drop into the sliders. I'm going to add all the different shades in here. And once again, I grabbed all my shades with this. So for the background, I went to the picker for background color. And I clicked this and I got a hex code, added it in the new filament using that hex code down here. And simple as that. So I'm going to continue adding all my different shades down here. All right, so now I have my shades added in. So now let's start blending some colors. So slowly with the slider, go up and down. You can use your arrow keys or you can use your mouse and scroll. So that kind of looks good there. Now with this one, probably somewhere around here looks nice. Now we go to the third slider. Uh, we're gonna keep white the way it is. Then work with the darker one here. Like that there. You're not going to be able to get it perfect, but you can get it pretty bang on or come up with something unique and cool. Uh, take note of your layers. Make sure they don't overlap. It'll go red if they do. So, for example, I've overlapped these two. It's red. It won't work on the printer unless you have an IDEX printer. Now we'll get some of that light brown in. Just add some more. Hmm. That kind of looks nice there. And I've clashed with this one. So I'm going to drop this one down a couple. Leave it there. And make sure you don't go over the amount of uh, filaments you have in your printer. Or uh, like my, I have an AMS unit. I can only do eight colors. So I can't work with more than eight colors. I do eventually plan to expand up to 16. But until then... This is what I got to work with. So I like to add in a tiny bit of red because it kind of makes it pop. Gives it a nice little bold look, a nice little touch. But I don't want to add the red in too late into the print because it won't look nice. So that blends in nicely there. And then I want to add some gray for shadows. That should be good there. I'm going to drop the black down a little bit. No, I'm going to leave the black at four. And then let's enhance that a little bit. Go back to the third slider. It's a lot of trial and error until you get the right mixture and something that looks good. So I'm starting to get close, as you can see. 
you know what I'm going to do? Instead of adding this first one in as black, I'm going to use one of these darker shades of brown here. So yeah, by changing it to a different shade, it really threw the print off. So let's go back down to black. And just play around with the shades a little bit until it starts to look nice again. So what I do as well is I also play around with the brightness adjustment. There we go. So that one there kind of looks good. Yeah, see if I turn red off it gets rid of the extra highlights. I'm gonna lighten up the uh, stomach area a little bit. Okay, so then we're getting close, but I'm still not satisfied. So now I'm gonna play with the depth. So where the depth makes a big difference are these little peaks here. So I'm gonna turn the wireframe on so we can see the triangles. So I'm gonna increase the depth a little bit. But when you're doing the depth, you do not really want to uh, be zoomed in that way because you want to see the results with the depth changes. The more depth you give it, the more layers you'll be able to work with cleanly. Alright, so I'm going to continue playing with this for a little bit, and I'll show you the finished result in one second. Alright, so I played around with the colors, and this is my final result. As you can see, it looks pretty awesome. So I ended up using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 colors. Now, I don't have 10 color AMS, so I can probably get rid of some of these colors. It'll affect the print a little bit, but... If I hit the right one, I'll be able to uh, get it close to what it currently looks like without uh, going overkill. So there we go. Now I'm at eight colors. So now basically what I need to do is I need to find the colors that I matched with the print with the colors I have in stock. So what I do is I hit the scribe and you get the uh, instructions here basically for swapping. So once I work with this program more and set it up I'll probably get names for all these colors rather than hex codes so my next task is to take these go to Amazon find as close as possible shade as possible to uh, these here so I know Overture Overture has a lot of colors here's Overture's site so I'm fairly certain but I'll be able to match these shades with something Overture has. So assuming I don't have the colors or I don't want to buy colors, work with the colors you have. Uh, this tool here will make your life a lot easier because you can at least pinpoint a specific unique color and uh, try to match it with what's available online, what you have in your house, that kind of thing. So let's do another example of uh, something with more, something other than browns. So I'll just go with this for example. This is uh, Goku from a show I used to watch when I was younger. So I want to look at the purple right there. So here we go. I know this color exists. I actually have violet in stock. Uh, when I say in stock, I mean in my house. So I'm going to go ahead and click new filament. Throw in that hex code here. Click OK and then type in Polymaker. Violet. Violetta, Violetta. I don't know why I just did that. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm going to go here, Polymaker. So you, you realize how it's all brown like this? It's because it still has the colors I loaded from the last uh, image. You have to kind of close the app and reopen it to reset everything. They obviously have not added that function to clear all this yet. Uh, even if I here, I'll show you something in a sec. So let me just do that violet test. Where's that violet right here? So see, 
looks uh, pretty nice already. So that's another way of doing this. And I'm going to make more videos. If you have any requests, uh, shoot them down in the comment section. And I'm happy to make more videos. I plan to make tons and tons of stuff on 3D printing. I'm still going to do my unboxing videos, reviews on products. But I'm really trying to focus on 3D printing here. I want to really build my audience and my subscriber base up based on uh, people that enjoy my videos and actually interact with me. I love to interact. I like to socialize. So if you have comments, I'll reply to them almost guaranteed. So if I click close here, okay. So if you click close actually, just like I did, it resets all the uh, sliders here. So that's another way to do it. So anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So, so once again, again, the tool is called Color Contrast Analyzer. I'm not gonna say it the way it's spelled. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna scan my face here. I'm purple apparently. Let's try again. So it's a really neat tool. I believe it's open source. Um, it's completely free. So go ahead and give it a download. Let me know what you thought of it. Let me know uh, what works for you. Post your pictures on Facebook. I'm in the Bamboo group and a bunch of 3D printing groups. And I'd love to see what you come up with. And uh, just uh, put like at MikeBot or at Mike, M-I-K-E or something when you post on Facebook. And I will give you some feedback on it. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you all for watching today. My thought out.